Hi guys and welcome back to part 2 of the MySQL database tutorial for Unreal Engine 4 and in this part guys we will be finishing it off, we will be completing how to get all the data and I will be showing you guys where to host the database for free without your credit card information and yeah guys for any questions or suggestions make sure you guys do join my discord server link is down in the video description and it helps me out a lot guys if you guys subscribe and like this video so let's actually start so what I've done is inside of the database helper this is where we actually stopped we just finished writing the create da connect to database function so what we can do is whoops I should have called it connect to database but doesn't really matter so I've actually entered in the credentials I'll show you guys what to enter in here soon so I've just created a few more functions if you guys haven't checked the previous one out you may not be able to follow it so here I've just created a new variable called query and I've just stored the query in since we are running this on another thread there's no way we can actually pass this in so I'm just storing this in a variable and I'm accessing it here so this is what you need to do so this is a get data function so we are going to be calling get data underscore internal separately on another thread and once we do that inside of this we'll be executing the query and we'll be getting the result of course this will depend on your implementation if you want to get multiple results you could just do a for loop now this is completely your logic so I'm I'm just doing it for the sake of a demo so I'm just getting one result you could do a batch get data and batch put data stuff like that it's completely up to you now I've created another function this one's essential if you guys don't close the connection what can happen is sometimes there is a user limit for your database service and if it exceeds those many users your other players will not be able to update get or do anything with the database similarly I've created update data you guys could just copy it over if you want to just use whatever I have or again you could create your own again so everything is pretty much the same I've just created a new event dispatcher for each one then I've just uh, called it whenever it's successful whenever it's a failure or an error I just uh, set this boolean to false and I call it again so same stuff for put data the only reason I'm doing get data and put data separately is only so that we can differentiate and that one has a return value whereas put data does not return anything only get data does it retrieves the, the row that we found so once we have all of this so I've already set up all of this inside of clever cloud and I'll tell you guys what this is so all you need to do is you need to head into clevercloud.com create an account it's really simple it's honestly something which does not need to be in the tutorial it's pretty simple so once you do that just head into personal space and under personal space just click on create create an add-on and create MySQL if you select my MySQL what's gonna happen is you are going to get an option to name it I just named my nest test and let me just reset this so we can start from scratch so once you have this once you have created the database this is what you should be having and this is the kind of information that we'll be needing to actually retrieve and update our data cool so just watching my own tutorial there to see where I stopped so inside of unreal now create a new blueprint class and call this one main GI or whoops call this game instance just my naming convention calling it main GI since there is only one game instance the reason we are doing it inside the game instance in case you don't have the understanding of it is that the database isn't really related to any of the gameplay logic so since the game instance is persistent between levels it's logical to do it inside of here so let's just do it on init so let's say we want to update something so event init now what we can do is we can uh, create or I think it's called construct construct object from class and outer is going to be self and this is this one's going to be database helper and we are going to promote this to a variable and call this db could call it whatever you want again 
so about the credentials so copy the host name and inside of the database helper where you had created the create database function what you do is you just copy the host over here database name is again going to go inside the database name same for all the other fields I think it's pretty easy to understand just do that and once you're done with that let's actually create a table before we actually start running our queries so go to your PHP my admin section and let that load takes quite some time so once you're done with that head into databases head into the first one over there and let's just create a table with two simple columns and let's just call this one player DB just click on go you could name your table whatever you want again so for ID let's just create a variable character of length 50 let's say and let's just name it ID and inside of here let's just name it uh, points if I can spell that correctly points and let this be of type integer so guess we have everything set up you guys could set a primary key or if you guys are used to MySQL you guys could uh, run commands as well either right through our, the functions that we created or through here you could run the commands it's completely up to you now this is the table that we are going to create and these are the two columns of the table so let's just save it although this is not a MySQL tutorial I'm assuming some of you guys are beginners over here so I will be explaining some of the things a little more in detail so we have the table if you click on structure you see you see ID as well as points so now if you click on browse you see the table is empty you just have the two columns and this is where we can start running our commands so the way you do it is using the functions that we created inside of this object so the database helper class has a bunch of functions and we have created an object to it so using this what we can do is first of all we can connect to the database so once the database connection has been established so this event is going to be called on connection result so let's just assign an event to it so I'm not bothering to name all of these again this is the same thing so once the connection is a success this is called now it's very important that you guys close the connection once you actually created I'll be showing you guys how to do that as well so if it's a success we can just put data uh, whoops I should be calling it from the object so put data now we are not calling any of the internal functions just remember that so if it's a failure let's just uh, print uh, error could not connect alright so inside the query let's just type in insert into let's say I, I'm, I'm not sure what we called our table we called it player DB so insert into player DB and space values so here you could again you could use append so right click append uh, whoops append string so you could use append you could uh, have this in over here and then you could again pass in another integer maybe if you actually have data so for demonstration purposes I'll just manually enter in some information so the first one is a variable character the ID so what I am going to do is inside single quotes let's just type in some random value so I just uh, clicked on some random keys on my keyboard there don't mind that even for the score I just uh, let's say for example let's actually have 450 and close that uh, terminate that with a semicolon remember guys if your queries are wrong it may return success sometimes but you, you are not actually going to see any difference there are chances that it will also return a failure in case of put in case of get sometimes it does work but it does not actually return any value so now we can again create a custom event and the same thing again if you guys don't know what I'm doing here just uh, just uh, rewind a few seconds to see what we did here and try to understand that now whoops it's not supposed to be connection result so this is supposed to be so from the object now inside of put data if we 
see we are calling on put data so we can again call on put data and assign an event to it so on put data if it's a success all is good otherwise we could say put data failed so after this on our true what we can do is we can simply close our connection whoops we have to call the function from within here so close connection so it's the same function depends on what you name it and now again we are going to be binding an event so just drag that in whoops to the same mistake again so on close connection so on connection closed again this is an event dispatcher that we created inside of the database helper so it should be somewhere over here so close connection we are calling on connection closed if it's a success or a failure the reason we are not returning any boolean over here the simple reason is because there's no use like even if the connection uh, closed fails there's really nothing you can do about it so that's the reason we are not returning anything so we could just print out a string and we could call it uh, connection closed don't mind if I made any spelling errors over there so if we have everything set up now correctly one important thing go to your project settings go to your uh, game instance and change that to main GI I've already done that but if you haven't just do it so click on save all and click on play and if we wait you see connection closed now I know that this is a success because this function is only called if put data is a success so now if I just refresh my page so if I go ahead and refresh and head back into my PHP my admin and head into databases player DB you can see for ID 3625 we have points 450 cool guys now what we can do is we can actually test out our get function so instead of put data we'll just be using get so the procedure is pretty much the same I guess by this point you're pretty clear on how we do it so this again depends on your implementation of the function how you get the data so you can break the struct what it returns is the fields now if you're getting multiple rows you'll be getting an array of it and you can loop through it but in our case we're getting only one row so each of these structs that you will get back is actually one row since we are getting only one row it's a single variable otherwise it's going to be an array so if it's a success we'll be closing the connection sure but before we actually do that we'll just print out the data just to see if we did everything correctly so copy and paste that print string node and just use the string append so whoops append and inside of here what we can do first of all we need to change a query so instead of put we'll be calling this get data so so from the db object actually get data now query is going to be select star again this is more of a SQL thing and not an Unreal Engine thing so I'm not walking you guys through you guys could head into w3schools.com they have pretty good documentation for MySQL you guys could check it out so select star from player DB and we could have a condition as well so where ID equal to so I guess it was 3625 if I'm not wrong yep it was 3625 where ID equals 3625 just terminate that and once we are done with this we should be getting the result so let's just uh, get each of the columns since we have two columns we'll be having two elements in this array so element 1 is going to be the ID and element 2 is going to be that is index 1 is going to be the actual value so split struct pin split struct pin now key is going to return ID in in the case of the first index and in case of the second index key is actually going to return points that is the second column 
so let's just print in the values so let's just separate them by a colon and print that out whoops to the value and now if we go ahead and click on play you see that we retrieved our information so that's it guys for this video thanks for watching I hope you guys found this video very helpful and if it was please leave a like and make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel really helps me out a lot really motivates me and yeah guys for any questions or suggestions or just to hang out with us you guys could join our discord server link is down in the video description and I'll see you guys next time goodbye